Hi everyone, this is Perry of Details Retail. Today on the channel we're going to be working on the snowblower. Okay, so what happened with the snowblower is um, I lost the, the screws out of here and my starter fell into the flywheel and jammed it up. So I had to take it out. Um, so we have to put the starter in. Now a little history on my snowblower is I spent $50 on this snowblower. Uh, what happened was I bought it and the gearbox had been blown out of it from the previous owner. And it was it was almost like $800 to fix the gearbox and, it, and he lost the parts. So I had an older uh, Aaron snowblower, which uh, it was all, it was rusting out. So what I ended up doing is I took the gearbox out of the older one and put it in this one and it went right in, not a problem. Everything went fine. So I got a newer version of the Aaron's for 50 bucks. Um, then I put this uh, canopy on, which I'm really not too excited about this thing. Um, I broke my light on my garage with it. I hit it and I ended up JB welding that because I can't find one that's like that anymore where it uses a normal light bulb they got special light bulbs or LEDs that need to be inside that uh, are special to it so I can't find the old screw in type so if I had to fix it all right now get back to this um, what I ended up doing because this is so heavy and make that snowblower tip back is I have a, a piece of a uh, um, it's probably about five eighths. That was from a <laughs> a safe. Yeah. So I plasma cut it, painted it orange, slapped it on there for a weight so it wouldn't keep tip, tipping back. So yeah, okay. All right, guys, let's get back to uh, what we're here for. Let's get this starter on. So let me go grab the parts. I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, I rotated around so I could be in the sun, to have the parts in the sun so you could see what's going on. Okay, otherwise we might be looking at shadows. Okay, here we go. I just took out the two bolts to get the gas tank up out of the way. All right, so now you got these star or Torx bolts that go here. Now this is a Tecumseh engine. This is when the had Tecumseh was still around. Uh, I like Tecumseh. I wish Tecumseh was still around. Uh, Briggs and Stratton. I'm not that crazy about Briggs and Stratton engines. I always seem to have a lot of issues with them. Um, but Tecumseh's always been a good one. I I like them. They're they're tough. You know they do break, but the parts you always you know not the big most expensive stuff. So okay, and I'm not gonna be doing it all fancy getting high power tools out to do this but you know we're just gonna go with the little hand tools that whole everybody else could basically do the same thing so now the starter here has little grooves in it to fit on that so that can go up and in yeah work it in don't lose my screws Okay. Oh, see, now I'm gonna need something else. I'm gonna have to take this off. Get at that. Get at those. Let's see. I don't know if my little crescent wrench I got right here will really go get me to what I need to. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah. And my crank is blown away. I'm gonna use Loctite on my bolts. I don't want this to happen again. Yeah, should probably have the proper tools. Let me see if I can go find what I need. All right, guys, this is a 11 millimeter screw. So this fits in there like that. Let's see, take it off. Yeah, there is no snow, and we're gonna have any more snow. This is when I work on stuff. So, you know, I hate doing it in the winter time. 
I was pull starting it because it came off. All right, I'll get that in there. Just like that. Tighten it up. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get in here yet. I'm using a <laughs> breaker bar. Now I'm going to use a uh, blue Loctite on these. I went and bought some stainless steel quarter, quarter 20, or quarter 20, uh, half inch uh, Allen's cap screws with some washers. So I'm going to use that. Uh, hopefully these washers aren't that big that the cap screw goes through. Didn't think of that. Ooh, they're just barely going to bite onto that, so. Alright. I'm going to put a little uh, Loctite on here. So I don't lose them again. When this happened, I was not happy. As this, we had snow, and all of a sudden, my snowboard just jammed up. Good thing I didn't do it while I was running. Oh, we've been... I would have been really screwed then. But uh, it didn't do it while I was running. I went to go start the next time is when, when I had the issue. And I don't know why it just did that. That was just weird. You know, well, I never really looked at it. So, so it's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, I'm going to have to get an Allen wrench, though. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I got my Allen. Yeah, I don't use, uh, I don't have any of those fancy impacts everybody else got. So, just do that. Okay, guys, now make sure you don't uh, tighten them all up at once. So, once you, so that way you can get them in and wiggle it in there. All right, so now I'm going to... Give them a little torque though with my got the blue lock tight on there. Torque those down. Alright, that's torque down. Now I gotta get in here and give these a tighten up. Oh, let's go the right way. Now remember, you don't want to torque on these too much because this blocks aluminum. You'll strip it right out. So you want to just have it tight. So there, now that thing's on there tight. And we'll put our bracket back on with the 11 millimeter for the gas tank. Try to find where it was before in the dirt. tight all right we drop the drop this back into place if that doesn't slide up in there okay put our bolts back in
right guys, got the screws back in. So now I gotta get this, this guy back in his place. And that took a little screwdriver. And let me tell you, this was not easy to get unscrewed. It should go back easier than how it came out. Because the screws were all corroded. And they were all jammed up in there. Well, you don't want to tighten those down too tight because you'll break the plastic. Okay. Now, well, guys, it is uh, going to probably be summer. Let me get you so you can see me here. I don't know how good that picture was. It's probably shooting all over the place. All right, it's going to be summer now, and it's time to put this thing away. Um, I think it ran probably about five times. I only used synthetic oil, so I probably won't change the oil for next season. Now, I'm going to put some stable in the gas, fill the gas tank up, let it run, and stable the gas out. So she should be ready to go for next season. Alright guys, I'll get, we'll get the stable, we'll be right back. Alright, here's what we got to use, stable. Um, use stable. Do not use seafoam. Seafoam will mess your machine up. Uh, everybody sits there says seafoam's the greatest thing on earth. Yeah, if you like rebuilding your carburetors, it's great for that. Because it'll just eat away all the, the um, gasket inside. Okay, so it's uh, one ounce for two and a half gallon tank. I'm going to put one ounce in and that's not two and a half gallon, but I'm still going to put one ounce in. So you just fill it up to there. Squeeze it. Open up your tank, of course. You know, this is all really simple stuff. You guys should know most of this. Not a big deal. Put it in there. All right. Now we're gonna put some gas in it. Mix it with my stable. We should be ready to go next winter. Oh, there we are. We're full on that one. All right, guys. When you when you're putting fuel in these things, you should really use uh, premium gas with no uh, ethanol in it. But I never have. I've always used the cheap stuff, and I run my stable in it. I haven't had any problems. So you know, everybody can say what they want to say about running premium for me i just do it this way and if my carburetor gets all gummed up i have the ability to take my carburetor apart clean it out put it back on adjust it and i'm ready to go so if you're not one of those people that can do stuff like that yeah I'd go with the premium but if you can do that i wouldn't even go with the premium then because this works just as good um you might get a little more decay in, in the bowl for aluminum but stable usually doesn't allow that to happen too much. So, you know, I've looked at the inside of my bowl and my carburetor. I got a few little specks out where it deteriorated a little bit. Oh my God. It's not anything like, you know, causing life concerns. You clean it up, you throw it back on, it'll go again. I mean, it's pretty easy. All right, I'm going to give it a start, guys. Uh, grab the electricity and want to use the electric start to make sure it works. Otherwise, I was pull starting it when 
when my starter fell off. So you want to run this thing, get the stable into the carburetor, and mix it up into the gas. Well, stick it on the, or you turn it up, choke it, turn the key on, primer up, let's hit her. My starter's working. Awesome. I mean, I got gas tripping on the curb. We should start. wants to make me a liar. He smelled gas big time. Well guys, there it is. I let it run for a little bit. And then, uh, turn her down. Take the choke off like it keeps going. So, okay. That's how you put a starter on. So I'll get right back to you as soon as I get done with this. Alright guys, I had it run run for like five to ten minutes. Got my staple into the bowl of the carburetor. So she's all ready to go there, trying to gum up on me. Now, if you guys really want to go the extra mile, you pull the you spark plug and you go get some fogging uh, oil. You spray some fog and oil in there, and you'll be set. Uh, some people like to take the cover off and kill the thing out with the fog and oil. You know, kind of, you know, you really hear a lot of snowmobilers. Uh, boy, I wish I could talk. A lot of snowmobiler people do that. I used to do that with my snowmobiles when I had them. You just bog it out, then you take it off and you spray it out, and you'll be all ready to go for next season. Everything will be all preserved, you won't get rusty, you won't have any rings that seat and get stuck so all right guys uh, another thing about this thing is I changed the friction pad there's a little friction disc in here that's underneath here which makes the drive I've changed that I've changed the belts so I'm, my machine's all set ready to go so guys if you like the video please subscribe give it a thumbs up if you liked it share all right I'll see you in the next one guys have a great day